Welcome to our short feature on women investigating the trades. My name is Heather Estrada. We are really excited to have you hear from some of our faculty and students about why they chose non-traditional careers in the trades and how they've become successful in those chosen careers. We hope you enjoy hearing from them and are inspired by their stories. Hi, my name is Julie Arnold. I am an instructor, a welding instructor, and I also teach a blueprint reading class. So the obstacles that I have overcome through my time working with metal before school was just the ability to tell people that I, I was worth the time and energy for them to take me on as a newbie. But a lot of these companies want years and years of experience, um, really specific experience. And so I found the opportunity to pursue the welding and inspection degree and that, that was eye-opening, that the possibilities in this field are endless. And so I was able to work and pursue my degree here at the school. Since graduating, I then turned around and became an instructor, which has been an amazing experience. Um, but it allows me the opportunity to help the students overcome some of those life obstacles and help guide them. Specifically for women, the obstacle is that we are women and that there has been judgments and claims that maybe we don't belong in this field. And so I am more than motivated to, to help guide the women that are currently students and um, ensure that they know that they are welcome in this field. I'm Madison Brandt and I'm a first year welding student. So my sophomore year of high school, part of our curriculum was shielded metal arc welding. And that's kind of where I got my start. And it, I think out of all the things we did, like construction, electrical and all that, the welding was my favorite. And it's something that I thought about forever, even though I was thinking I was gonna go into a totally different field. I was planning on going into agricultural business. But the trades were always in the back of my mind. I'm like, oh, I could go do the trades. And I don't do well sitting in a class being talked at. I am hands-on. And I was actually sitting in the shop talking with my dad, who's kind of a self-taught fabricator. And he asked me, he was like, remember when you did welding your sophomore year of high school? I'm like, yeah. He's like, is that something you'd want to do? And I'm like, I've been thinking about it. And he's like, you may as well just do it. If it's been in your head for that long, you should go do it. And so that's, I, from that day forward, I was like, hey, I'm going to do it. Just go for it. Don't let overthinking or the thought of like, oh, I'm going to be the only girl in my class or the only girl at my job. Like, don't let that intimidate you. So that's one thing I had to tell myself is don't overthink it or follow your heart and go for it. And it turned out to be the best decision I ever made. My name's Alicia and I'm a graduate of the Class A CDL course. In the county that I live in, you're lucky to find a job that is above minimum wage and I have a family I need to support. There's a lot of trucking, there's a lot of gravel yards, there's a lot of cement companies. I needed to be able to get something that I hate to say was fairly quick in order to obtain an income to sustain my family because we weren't making it. I mean, yeah, I was making nine, 10 an hour which was above minimum wage, but it's not enough to sustain a family of four. We needed more, and I was the only one who was able to do something about it, so I did. They will teach you anything from the ins and outs. They trained me at almost 40 years old how to drive a stick shift for the first time in my life. My instructor was phenomenal, and he coached me through everything, took the time with me, and oh my gosh, we had an adventure. There were times with where it was nerve wracking, but that's all part of the adventure. Get outside of your shoes, get outside of your shadow, do something outside of the box, it is worth it. If there's any program available, even if it's within a two hour drive distance, because that's what I did, two hours down, two hours back, and then I worked on top of it. It is doable, it is feasible. If you have a door open to go through a Class A CDL course, go through it. You'd be a fool not to. I'm Carol Vincent. My courses I teach are electrical, electronics, and mathematics classes for occupational trade students. My parents encouraged me to find a career that I liked and that I could support myself in. 
If you are a hands-on person, if you like to find out how things work, if you like working with your hands, I would say look in the trades. One thing that I really like about uh, my position and my uh, job and my discipline is working with the students. I am continually impressed by their innovative solutions. Uh, last week I was doing a lab in digital electronics class and I asked my students to reset a counter at a certain point. And but I didn't tell them how they had to do that. And I was so impressed when I saw four different in independent solutions come out of that class as to how to reset that counter. And I have learned never to assume what my students know or what they've been through before they step into my classroom. I would say to any of my students uh, to find what lights you up, what what you like to do and follow that as a career and the manufacturing industry and the trades have a lot of great paying jobs and a lot of opportunities to anybody that's willing to attain the skills. So I'm Marie Gibson and I'm part of the firearms program and I love it. It's been really cool so far. I've been learning a lot. When I decided to go back to school, I was just looking around for programs that I thought would be interesting, and I saw this program that was offered, and I never heard of anything like it before at any other schools, so I figured it would be definitely right up my alley, because I'm really good at working with my hands and building stuff, and I'm very creative, and I like putting things together, so I'm really glad I decided to do it. It has been like a really good decision. <laughs> Everything that we've been learning here has all been new material for me. A lot of the guys here have either had some sort of previous experience or knowledge with the firearms or the tools that we've been using, whereas for me I've had to learn everything brand new and so that's been a, a challenge but luckily Kiaran and Brandon are really good teachers and they make it really easy to learn and everyone's been really helpful showing me how to use stuff that I don't know and giving me tips and proper procedures and everyone's been really helpful. The class before me has all been guys and they were the first year to work towards a degree. And we're the second year. And all my classmates are guys and they've told me that I am gonna be the first woman to get a degree in this program, which is really cool. I wasn't even planning on that at all. Didn't think that would ever be something that I could do. Just go for it. Don't be afraid of anything and if you are, then it's all in your head. Like if you want to go for it, just go for it because it's really fun and you'll meet a lot of really cool people and you'll learn a lot of really valuable skills and it can open a lot of opportunities up for you in the future. Michelle Durham, I'm second year student in the industrial machining program. I've always loved building things and have been always fascinated on how things were built and the process that went into it. I've three kids, I take care of a grandma, and I go to school full time. Um, I pretty much make sure all my classes are centered around those times. You know, I have classes either before I need to take my kids to school or I have them while my kids are at school. The majority of the time they're while my kids are in school. And then I make sure that my last class is before I have to go and pick them up. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it really is. If, you're, if you are somebody who enjoys building things and you like just not being stuck behind a desk, then this is perfect. You can, it's a great career. There's a lot of older machinists that are now starting to retire, so that area needs to be filled. So the more people who get into it, the more things can be produced again here in America. So it's a great field especially if you really enjoy seeing the fruits of your labor, if you enjoy seeing the process of how things are made and you wanna have your hand in that, by all means, get into it. It's a great program. My name's Corinne Greenwald. I'm the program director of the surveying program. I didn't know I was attracted to the surveying field at first. Uh, I was bartending at the Elks Lodge in Polson and one of my customers was a retired high school guidance counselor that unbeknownst to me over the years had asked me enough questions to understand that I really like math and I really like being outside and one day he presented to me that I should look into surveying because he thought I'd be a great fit and he actually helped me get my first job. He contacted a local surveyor in Polson and the next day 
Um, that surveyor came in and offered me a chance to go out on the crew the next morning, so um, I've just never looked back since then. Uh, it, it can be a struggle being a female in a male-dominated field and oftentimes trying to ensure that um, you're being taken seriously. Sometimes I think females in male-dominated fields have slightly uh, more to show before they're maybe taken seriously by their peers. Um, and, and I hope that that's changing as more females enter the profession. Um, it's different every day. Uh, it's never the same. Every job is different. I like to problem solve and surveying lends itself to being a, um, to solving problems. So every project is different. No project is the same as the last project. Even if they appear so on the face, there's always slight differences. So for me, I enjoy uh, not knowing what's coming next and constantly staying on my toes and, and solving the next problem. Do it, jump in, <laughs> come join us. Um, there's lots of jobs right now. It's a, it's a great career for entering the profession. There are, um, there's a strong need for surveyors and I think females just naturally make great surveyors because we are good problem solvers. We're big picture thinkers and uh, there's definitely a need for that in surveying so I think um, I think females make great surveyors. Some of the best surveyors I know are females, so I think if anyone's thinking about joining the profession, they should, they should do it. Hi, uh, my name is Manda Hudak. I would say for me, I didn't think of going into the food business because I was a woman or because I wasn't. It wasn't because I saw women out there doing it. So I think the reason why I was willing to even consider it is because um, I was the daughter of World War II generation. I was an oops kid. I was sort of the youngest of uh, parents that didn't think they were going to have any other kids. And, you know, both my parents were pilots. My mother was a pilot and she was running an airport during uh, the war. And so she'd entered the workforce and that was my example. My example is you can do anything you want to do. So I didn't really consider not doing what I wanted to do. So when I looked at my work, I thought, I gotta, I gotta get the best education I can do. I've gotta get the best training I can get. So if I thought about myself competing against a man for a job, which I didn't really consider, um, I just thought as an individual, I better be as prepared as I can be. So, you know, I really focused on quality education. I went about collecting great work experiences that would qualify me without consideration. I think in our business, what qualifies a person for a job is their work ethic. And that's really what stands out in food and beverage. And I have that in spades. So I think for that reason, um, I was able to get great jobs and hold them. So I consider the Culinary Institute of, of America in Hyde Park, New York. And I will say then I was probably one in 10 students. So the, the ratio of women to men was one to 10 when I was there in the early 80s, mid 80s. Um, now it's over 50%. So at the culinary, I think nationwide, if you look at enrollment of women in culinary programs, over 50% now are women. That's substantial within one career. And so I think now, as I find myself in education, my drive is to give back, you know, to provide that hand up, to give that opportunity to a student, provide the motivation, or not really the motivation, they have to be motivated in this area, but to inspire them to be things that they may not even consider, just through my example, which has been things I never thought I could do. So the drive for me now is to provide inspiration to the next generation. So everybody, I really hope that you've enjoyed and been inspired by all these women working in the trades today and, and found some inspiration. But you know, motivation has to be yours. So these are great examples, but we're all here cheering you on, encouraging you to go out there and be your best you. And uh, if you do that, you know, uh, nobody can do it for you. You gotta do it for yourself. And we wish you the best of luck.